As I alluded to in a previous video, this is the ASRock motherboard that I plan to replace the ASUS motherboard with in my current Unraid Ryzen server. And obviously that all kind of fell apart because, well mostly because this LSI card failed at the very tail end of filming and I kind of needed it because I ran into some issues um, right at the end of that video as well. If you guys really want to see that video, just drop some comments below um, and I'll get it edited and released. But just so you know, it is unfinished. So there is no end state to that video. Things are, I started to see some really weird things at the end that I didn't even discuss in that video itself, but I'll talk about that here today. So originally I reached out to ASRock right as the outbreak happened. I was talking to them about possibly getting this board and then the pandemic happened and never heard from them again. Well today I have this board now, which is awesome. And this board has some pretty cool features I think you guys would wanna know about and what got me interested in the board originally itself too. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what it's all about. All right, well, first things for, first, this is the X470D4U2T or 2T. And what's really, really cool about this board and one of the things that drew me to it at first is that it has onboard VGA. So if you're running a Ryzen uh, CPU like the 3700X like I am, you won't have any graphics out. And what's nice about having this is that this will show us um, the BIOS as it boots up and also help us for any troubleshooting that may that we may need to do if something goes wrong with the BIOS or Unraid itself. And obviously Unraid can attach to the A-speed VGA out here. So that way when we get prompted, uh, you know, do we want to boot into the GUI or just the command line, we can actually choose that and see what we're doing and log into um, Unraid should we need to for any reasons. Now that's Probably by far one of the best things about this board is having that, but also there's a few more things. So this port right here allows us uh, BMC slash IPMI access. So we can actually manage this motherboard remotely or anywhere on our network and, you know, change like the fans and just really, uh, you know, update the BIOS, things of that nature. We can really control a lot of the board and it also allows us to interact with the operating system should we need. Now that's obviously really cool. And another cool thing while we're looking at the back I.O. here is the dual 10 gig uh, Ethernet port. So these are Intel X550, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that one, but I'm pretty sure they're Intel uh, chipset or Intel NICs, uh, which is really cool. And somewhere on this board is an Intel chipset that handles that. And of course, we have a speaker, which you guys might know that I'm kind of fond of. And then also one thing to take note of here is that it has dual M.2 drives. So uh, one of these is a SATA 3 and your typical NVMe um, M.2 slot, and the other one's just NVMe. And then you can configure those in the BIOS to be either or, but they automatically uh, show up appropriately as far as I could tell. Now, this thing's got fan headers for days. So there's an LED fan, one, two, three. There's fan headers here. There's a... Well, I thought there was more fan headers, but I don't see it. I'm pretty sure there was a oh, that CPU fan header, which is really cool to see on uh, a board like this because I find that on some of the motherboards I've handled in the past, you don't really get a lot of fan headers and you have to like use breakout cables and stuff. Now some shortcomings, oh, well actually before we talk about shortcomings, so we can get up to 128 gigabytes of RAM on this board, which is really cool. And it does support overclocking of the RAM and the CPU. And I believe the max CPU that is currently supported is the 3950X, which is really freaking cool. It's got onboard, or not onboard, it's got USB 3.0. So that's also a huge plus. And it also has USB 3.0 on the rear. There is no onboard USB, which kind of sucks. And in some cases, Unraid recommends that you don't use USB 2.0, but and you may experience issues using 3.0. I personally have never seen any issues using USB 3.0 with Unraid, but if that's something that scares you off, then you should be aware of that nonetheless. Some of the drawbacks to this board are obviously the lack of I.O. You get two USB ports and you'll probably need to use a hub if you need more USB. And uh, what else? Well, I can't really think of any other downsides. You may have some issues here with heat sinks, um, but that's not something I experienced. Um, it only has four onboard uh, SATA ports, which kind of sucks because you might need more than four, uh, especially for a server. 
but you know, I was well, I was using the SAS card anyway, and that was a breakout for all my drives. And I think that's most of the drawbacks. So obviously this board is an MATX, so you're limited on your uh, PCI Express slots that you can have available. But I think, you know, these three or two actually are, are pretty well, or pretty much all you're gonna need. Now, speaking of PCI expansion slots, uh, there are some things that you need to know if you're thinking about purchasing this board and you've probably already looked it up. But the 10 gig uh, ethernet ports here use four lanes, I believe, to function. So you're gonna lose four lanes there immediately. This is a full 16, which is really nice. And this is a 16 slot, but it's electrically wired to be an eight slot. So what that means is that, you know, just because you have a card that could you know, fits in here doesn't mean it's going to get the full bandwidth that uh, you might expect. So, you know, if you're running like a graphs card and want to make sure you get all of that sweet bandwidth, then you're going to want to put it in this top slot here. While I personally didn't get to finish testing everything out, one of the things I noticed is that this slot typically didn't actually do anything for any of the devices I plugged into it. So what I mean by that is when I had my LSI card occupying this top PCI Express slot, and then I wanted to add let's say this graphics card into the bottom slot, this card was never detected by the operating system. So obviously I figured I was doing something wrong. And of course I found out that within the BIOS, you can actually change how these two work together. So if you set in the BIOS that you want this slot to be eight lanes, this slot will now become available and start working. So what I ended up doing was taking my graphics card and sticking it in the top slot because why not? and then taking my LSI 2.0 card and sticking it in the slot down here, which should have worked. However, the LSI card was not discoverable. Now it may have died during this time period and I didn't know about it yet, but one of the things I did try later was actually occupying both slots with two graphics cards that I had and anything that I ever put in this slot never worked. Now they did work if this slot wasn't occupied. So I know that this port is working, but for some reason, I was just out of bandwidth and that may be due to the um, due because I was using dual NVMe ports here so I was just out of PCI lanes but that's not something I was able to confirm and I'm unwilling to kind of troubleshoot that now because I'd really rather have my server operational than play around with this for any longer than I already have. So that may be something you guys uh, will need to figure out on your own. That's I've looked online but as far as I can tell no one's complained about it so it's probably just something that I'm doing wrong. And oh, by the way, uh, I, I actually did come across a post where someone w had the same problem as me. Um, I did try a powered GPU in this slot and it still uh, wasn't working. So it's obviously not a power issue or I'm pretty sure it's not a power issue, uh, especially considering when I had un or removed any device in this slot, then suddenly whatever device was in here would work. Continuing the subject of PCI lanes, you would assume that both of these M.2 slots here are capable of running a PCI 3.04 X speeds, but they are in fact not. The M.2 first slot here is only capable of running PCI 3.02 X or at SATA 3, and the second one here is capable of running at PCI 2.04 X. So for anybody out there that just needs all of those extra bandwidth that they can get uh, you should know that they may not be capable of satisfying your needs. Well, I think that's a pretty decent summary for this board and some of the things I experienced. Uh, but if you guys want to know more information about this board in particular, I'll leave a link in the video description below to serve the home. It has a great article about this board and it goes into lots of great detail. I came across their article when I was basically troubleshooting some of the issues I ran into and just trying to gauge like how to fix them. And uh, unfortunately I never got through some of those and obviously the LSI card died and that's where we are today. So with that, I wanna thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.